Hey there Little Warriors, it's Steve from Little Wars TV here and if you watched our Battle of Berlin video that we released a couple weeks ago then you know that this tremendous board that we played on was created by Aaron right here. He's sitting with me. Thanks for joining us Aaron. Thanks for bringing this fantastic board and uh, running that game for us. It was of particular interest to me, certainly as, as someone who's not only a war gamer, but also really deep into 3D printing at this point, which you all should know if you've watched my videos, just to know that uh, 3D printing played a pretty big role in assembling this board, didn't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think just about everything on this board is 3D printed, which yeah. is a big change from what I typically would do. A lot of the kind of really detailed buildings are from uh, a company called WOW Buildings. And a lot of these buildings are actually uh, 28 millimeter scale that I have shrunk down and then slightly modified for my stuff here at uh, the six millimeter scale. And, and I know I've talked about it before, that is truly one of the great things about 3D printing. I mean, yes. you know, once you get into that slicer, you can resize it to whatever you need. Typically when I do terrain, I do FDM. I use the, the filament printing, but for something this small and detailed, you went resin, right? Absolutely, yeah. I only own a resin printer. Uh, I've never owned an FDM. I'm kind of fully into six millimeter uh, gaming now, so I don't really have plans on owning an FDM. Just a resin printer, and it's, it's a lot more complicated for resin printing. Like you have to really be careful about some safety and stuff, but it's doable. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It's doable. Now, how, how long would you estimate it took you to print up everything you needed to print up and then put this board together? Uh, I'm gonna guess probably 100 hours over, I don't know, eight months. Um, so when you guys saw me at uh, uh, Fall In last year, I had I talked about having this idea in there, and so that's I got home and I started working on it. Started doing research and I started getting the buildings and started printing them and started putting them together. And, and of those hundred hours, I think you've actually put recordings of about 99 hours uh, <laughs> in your YouTube channel. No, right? thankfully not. <laughs> it's got to be really boring. Um, but yeah, a lot of the, 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 the process of how I made this, how I even planned it, it's all on YouTube, on my project uh, Wargaming uh, YouTube site. And then um, some of these, like I said, most of these buildings are WoW buildings, but some of them I designed myself. So uh, particularly around the Reichstag and some of those uh, kind of official office looking buildings and the opera house, um, I went in and started uh, making my own models for them. Most of those are available for free on my uh, Project Wargaming uh, webpage, uh, projectwargaming.com. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Now, you know, I, I alluded to it earlier that you also have, are a designer, so, mm -hmm. and it's not just buildings either. I know at Project Wargaming, you and I have been going back and forth a little bit with uh, some of your projects there, uh, which include those six millimeter figures, right? Yeah, so I've really kind of gotten the hang of uh, 3D modeling, um, and so I, I wanted to try my hand at actually modeling some six millimeter figures, and so the first army that I did was Crusaders. And so I uh, got those to a point where I was really happy with them, and uh, actually those are on my website for sale now. So, and, and I think you know, for people who need to build up mass armies, mm -hmm. uh, if you have a 3D printer, and I mean for that you pretty much need a resin printer for, yes. the, for the detail. Uh, I, I'm excited about the prospect of being able to do that and having more historical ranges come out there. And, and I mean, how, how has 3D printing, and you're getting involved in 3D printing, affected your approach to the hobby and then after that how do you think it's going to affect the hobby in general moving forward well um i mean it's kind of basically completely changed how i think about how i put stuff together um i would have cast these by hand in the past and now i'm not doing that i'm just 3d printing them um, i can go in and take these models and manipulate them and adjust them so that uh I can kind of get what I want. So like the angles on certain streets and mm -hmm. things like that, I couldn't do that really with cast. I would have to make my own mold for that particular building. But with 3D printing, it's, it's pretty easy to manipulate online. So it does that. The other thing I think, particularly in the battle itself, was I was able to print off tons of T-34 tanks and even some of the German tanks. Those were all 3D printed, the ones that were on fire. Yeah. So I love GHQ models. I love the, the details that are there, which are amazing. 
but the cost of <laughs> buying a bunch the, of the GHB idea of taking a beautiful model <laughs> yeah. and then like sawing it in half or hitting it with yes. a hammer to make yeah. it look like a wreck it just it bothers me yeah. I've done the same thing more on the naval side mm -hmm. uh, you know with some of the markers that uh, I use for sunken ships in the Guadalcanal episode that yeah. were, were 3d printed even as far back as then yeah. uh, now when you talk about designing what program did you use to, to design you know the buildings here and and the figures that are on your website well, like manipulating the WoW buildings, I would uh, use some uh, Tinkercad stuff. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you can even do it just in your slicer, the way you kind of sure. set them up. So that was easy enough. Uh, I've learned a ton just by doing this board and I would do it differently now. Um, but most of my modeling is through Tinkercad. So mm -hmm. it's a free program that you can get online. Uh, and so- It's pretty easy to use. It, it really is. Um, I mean, there's a learning curve, and but you know, YouTube is, or YouTube pages, so it's like that's where you can find tutorials to easily learn how to do Tinkercad, and you can really get a lot of detail out of Tinkercad. Yeah, I, I was amazed when I when I looked at your six millimeter figures, printed up some of the test files that you sent me, and then I asked you, you know, what what program did you use? And you told me Tinkercad. I was amazed the the the, the detail you were able to get on those figures. I, I will say that you know, kind of as as you just alluded to, if you're interested in this type of thing, there is nothing better. That you can do to learn it, than just jump in and play around. Yes, uh, you know, get getting your your hands dirty, figuratively, not literally, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and just experiment it because it, it really. I never really considered myself to be someone who would be able to jump into a 3D modeling software mm -hmm. uh, and create something. Yet I've been able to do it, not so much in the six millimeter figure, but for for terrain. And I do think it. It has the potential to really change how you wargame the viewer and the inter industry as a whole. Yeah. Well, I, I think even with uh, the, the six millimeter figures that I'm producing, like I think it's interesting because it might actually be able to draw other players in that wouldn't do it. Because I can see like uncles or dads asking their sons to 3D print something for them. Mm -hmm. And then they might get interested in it enough that they might be able to get them to, to play the game. Yeah, I think it's it's a pretty cool idea to be able to have an idea for a game, go out there, design the figures in the terrain for it, print it up in your house, paint it up yourself, build the board. I mean, you haven't had to buy anything from anyone else, except maybe the STL files if you don't want to do the design. Mm -hmm. And again, ProjectWarGaming.com has a bunch of STL files that you can you can look into purchasing. Uh, it really it really changes the way that you create and play a game. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much for uh, bringing this uh, all the way from Indiana, for running the game for us, and for sitting down to talk a little bit about uh, how you put it together in 3D printing. Yeah, well, thank you. You kind of got me interested in 3D printing, so this is in some ways a result from uh, your guys' videos, so I appreciate it. No, in all ways, it's a result. Always, yes. Well, that's fine. <laughs>